I'm sorry, but I can't have you coming in late on the lunch ship. Come on, Mr. Wilcox. You know I go to school. Can I make up the time? I don't know. Look, you have a you have a really lovely voice. What if I give you a shot on the night shift, huh? Uh-oh. I band practice is three nights a week. What about Sunday? No, I'm sorry. I've had that Sunday crew for over a year. I don't need anybody else. I'm afraid I'm just going to have to let you go. Come on, Mr. Wilcox. I need this job. Sorry, Kathy. Hey, I got a studio for two hours. Come on. What's the matter with you? I said I got a studio. I got fired. Fired? Forget it. Willie called and wants us to come to Colorado. Colorado? In the middle of summer? Well, he says out there it's the height of the season. He says he can book us up solid. He's got hotels, lodges, restaurants, the works. Come on, we just got started here. Just cats will get cash ahead. And uh, we can go camping and riding. You don't ride. Neither do I. So what? We'll learn. So what about school? We'll be back in September. No, school's a cop out, Kathy. You're going to be a singer. You sing. Well, what about Patrick? Patrick can take care of himself. Ha! Huh. Kathy. You're not his mother. You're his sister. This is not a unisex locker room, buddy. Well, how would you know? Hey! 
Cut it. It's bad, man. It's sloppy. It's got to shine. It's really got to cook. I'm sorry. It's, it's got to be smooth and clean. It's my fault. I'm not together. Really. It's okay. okay, okay. Look, we're here to make a demo. Okay. Let's, Let's make, make a demo. demo. <laughs> make a demo, okay. Let's do it. Bar 13. Ba 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 da 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 da. That's nice. Ba 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 ba. Is there any more fried chicken waiting for my tummy in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one more piece. You want it? <laughs> I'll take some later. Okay. Da 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 da. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. So you want to stop for some coffee? I can't. I'm late already. What's your big hurry? You don't have a job anymore. That's my hurry. I'm looking. Oh, don't worry about it. You'll find something. Doesn't look like much, does it? Aristotle was so unimpressed by its appearance, he concluded the brain was merely a cooling system for the spectacular heart. So much for Aristotle. Still, it doesn't pump, filter, or aerate blood, digest food, or participate in reproduction. The brain in its heart. And while it performs none of the functions necessary for sustaining life, nevertheless, it controls them all. What does this mean? to the neurosurgeon. In most surgical procedures, a half-inch mistake results in a few extra sutures, an artery that has to be reconnected. At worst, a little excess tissue removed. Whatever, the error is corrected, and the patient shows little or no ill effect. The neurosurgeon slips a millimeter, and a memory is erased, a hand is paralyzed, speech is lost, or the patient dies. What can you look forward to practicing in a big city hospital? Auto accidents, gunshot wounds, bludgeonings. Our job is to limit the damage. Brain tumors come in too late. Patients trying to cure themselves with aspirin because they're too ignorant to go to doctors or too poor or too frightened. By the time we get them, the damage is often irreversible. Perform a successful appendectomy and a happy patient goes home to his family, cured. The neurosurgeon extends a life, three months, six months, a year. That we call success. How can they stand it? I mean, why do you do it? want safety? Sentimental patients sending you family portraits and Christmas presents? Become an obstetrician. <laughs> Dr. Cohen, yes, please. Dr. So how come you can't tell me what I've got? We'd rather wait until we evaluate the scan. Come on, just guess. Well, we don't know for sure, but the symptoms look like a grand mal seizure. Epilepsy? How could I get epilepsy? Yeah, that is a question. Usually doesn't just start in people your age. That's why it's probably something else. And it might be nothing. Why don't you just hold off till we complete the evaluation? Wait a minute. What's this? Your ward. Mrs. Vance, Mrs. Vance, in heaven I told you before that you're not allowed to smoke. Nobody wants to smoke. 
I'm not staying in here. I want my own room. No one in ward service gets a private room. I'm not going in there. No way. I want to speak to the person in charge. I admitted you. That's me. Look, I'm not going in there. Those people are being left to die. I've seen that. I've seen what happens to people who don't have any money and can't defend themselves. Miss Morris, maybe we can get you a room tomorrow. Meantime, you have to be in the ward. Okay. But I want you to tell them I'm not going to stay there. There it is. Left temporal lobe. It's really rotten. Rotten? Is that a medical term? It's just that she's a singer and she's so young and pretty. I like to observe. Well, I'm sure you want to be there for sound, medical, and scientific reasons. Doctor, would you mind not treating me like some lower form of life? Mm. She's a singer. Well, if anything goes wrong, I promise not to take out anything more than the disco. Why? Don't you want to listen to my chest? That's a more direct approach. I don't have to listen to your chest. I'm your doctor. At least you're handsome. I'm your doctor unless you have a doctor of your own. I haven't been sick since I came to New York. Good. Three years. Very good. Not even a gynecologist. Really? Are those mine? Yes. Listen, I really don't think there's anything serious the matter with me. Because I feel really great. Want to feel my muscle? I want to explain this very clearly because I know it's going to sound a lot worse than it actually is. Okay. You've prepared me. You have a meningioma. That's what caused you to black out. Now, it's definitely benign. And it's easy to remove, so I don't want you to worry about it too much. Why don't you just tell me what I've got? Well, you have a brain tumor. What we do is we make a small incision. <coughs> oh, Heidi, what's the matter? All right, excuse me. Are you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. Are you sure? Not really. <sighs> oh, God. Why me? <laughs> You're not alone. Men and Joma's are already quite common. Common? So how did I get it? I don't know. We don't know what causes these things. So, outside of my dying, what could go wrong? Well, you're young, you're strong. It's nearly an ideal circumstance. It's small, easy to get to, right on the surface. Almost so simple, it's routine. Am I singing? What about my singing? That comes from a different area, so there's really... Because if anything went wrong with my singing, you might as well just hang it up. I wouldn't want to live. You might as well just say bye-bye right there on the table. Isn't that a little immature? How would you like it if somebody told you you'd never operate again? That would be hard, but I'm sure I'd make an adjustment. Do you believe in God? If you're asking me if I believe in divine intervention, the answer is no. I believe that I am totally responsible for what I do and how well I do it. I'm not sure that's so hot. You married? Yes. Why? I hope she's strong. Why? Because I have a feeling you're more of a surgeon than a husband.
I'm right, aren't I? I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Sweetheart. Hi, darling. How was your day? Good. How was the dinner? Just fine. The Ballards asked for you. I'm sorry I couldn't get there. It's okay. They're used to you not showing up. Have you had dinner? Um, no. Can I get you something? No, don't bother. I, I have to find... Uh, there was an issue of the Journal of Neurosurgery that I left... new patient oh unbelievable i've got a young girl who has a perfectly placed meningioma she has a good chance to walk out alive and well she tells me if she can't sing she doesn't want to live unbelievable are you sure i can't make you some supper no well, maybe later i had some uh, clippings on microsurgery oh. Richard, my uh, appointment to the mayor's council came through today. Really? Oh, that's good. You wanted that. I know. You must be very happy. Well, I certainly thought I would be. Well? I don't know. I feel I bit off more than I can chew. Don't be silly. You're fabulous with that stuff. I don't know, Richard. I feel like I'm panicking. Very natural. People get into something new, they always have doubts. Very natural. You okay? I'm okay. You had a shot less than an hour ago. Can I have another Just one? relax and try and get some sleep, oh, okay? please. What a zoo. Downer of all time, right? <laughs> Hi. Did you get in touch with Patrick? Uh, not yet, but I'll keep trying. You okay? Sure. Will they figure out what's wrong with you or what? Not exactly. You still have to make more tests. What do you mean, not exactly? <laughs> well, it might be... It might be what? Well, they think it could be a brain tumor. Brain tumor? But I'm gonna be okay. Brain tumor? Oh, man. Come on, it's not gonna be that bad. I mean, what's bad is being in here, right? Anyway, I'm gonna be out of here in a couple of days. Hey, we had a great rehearsal tonight. You want to hear what I played? Not now. No? We got a gig for the weekend. Yeah? I wish you could be there. Listen, if anything bad happens, I mean, if anything goes wrong, do you think you could stick by Patrick? I mean, he's really going to need a real friend now. Not Nothing's gonna happen to you. I know, but just in case. Man, it's just such a total bummer. Let's listen to the tape. lost i ended up in maternity i thought i was somebody's father so what's all this about i mean larry told me he's sick how serious is this patrick cool it i'm fine well you're so fine what are you doing in a hospital 
I'm gonna be okay. Kathy, I come running all the way home scared out of my mind and you say, cool it, I'm okay? Come on, don't play big sister with me, huh? Okay. I have a little tumor. It's benign. It's called a meningioma. My doctor's gonna take it out. It's really routine. Kathy, don't lie to me. I don't lie to you. Because I'll never get over Dad lying to me about Mom. <laughs> he was so hopped up trying to convince me that she was all right, he damn near forgot to tell me when she died. I'm not gonna die. Well, that's good then. Oh, I like this one much better. I don't want to be a charity case. I want the doctor to feel like he's being paid for operating on me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, how much is it going to cost? $15,000. $15,000? Where are we going to get $15,000? The house the folks left us. We own that together. Yeah, but Kathy, we live off that rental money. That's all we have. We can sell it. Oh, man, no good. No good. It's no good. You'll get your share. I'll just use mine. Well, that won't be enough. I'll borrow them. Why? Kathy, a lot of doctors might... Might treat you better just because you are a charity patient. Some people think we like that. We do things on our own. We don't ask for help. You ask for help, you just end up getting kicked in the teeth. Yeah, but... It's me. It's my brain. I'm gonna do it this way. Excuse me. It's Morris. Hi. How are you feeling? Okay. Good. This is my brother, Patrick, Hello. Dr. Connaught. Hello. Nice, nice to, to meet you. Doing? Patrick's trying not to panic, but I don't think he's quite making it. Come on, cut it out. When are you going to do it? I have your schedule for Friday. But that's in a week. All ward patients are scheduled for Friday. I don't want to be a ward patient. I don't want to wait until Friday. Kathy, it doesn't make any difference whether you're a ward patient or a private patient. I will still be your doctor, and you'll still have the same nurses. Well, if it's the same thing, then how come there are different operating days? We have to have some system so we can plan our schedule. That's bull. First you tell me I need an emergency operation, and now you're telling me I can wait a week? Miss Morris, I don't know what anyone else has told you, and I don't care. I'm your doctor, and as long as I'm your doctor, you'll listen to what I tell you. I'm telling you that a few days more will not make a difference. So well, not to you, maybe, or to this hospital, but to us, it makes a difference. Look, we're going to pay for you. We're not here on charity, you know. I did not come here to discuss you. We're going to pay for everything. We have a house, and we'll sell it if we have to. I'll have someone from administration come and discuss it with you. You get her a private room. You understand? Give the Morris girl a room. A private room? As private as possible. It's okay, you're entitled to be late. I missed dinner completely for six weeks. Yeah. I don't even want to know where you were. Are you hungry? I was having a drink with Julian. All right, now you're here. Have a fantastic dinner. And if you're not hungry, that's all right, too. Sweetheart, I was late because no, I... No, 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 you don't have to apologize, really. Are you hungry? It looks lovely. Thank you. The table is beautiful. Thank you. But I just don't think it's going to help. Help what? I... Oh! Oh! Julian! Yes! Oh, it's really wonderful having a genius psychiatrist in the family. Well, we could afford our own. Yes. Maybe it would help us confront some things. Confront what things? bothering us 
Lily, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not unhappy. Richard, if you think making a romantic dinner, which I appreciate, I do, is going to give you license to ignore our marriage for another six weeks. I don't want this marriage to fail. Oh, Lily, come on. Richard, I can take the ups and downs. I can accept that. There's something going on. I don't know what it is. We've become roommates. Lily, why is this happening all of a sudden? It isn't all of a sudden. God, it's grown. It's developed. Richard, I know you want me to be happy. I know you do. But if I'm not, either you don't want to deal with it, or you don't know how. I'm trying to deal with it. I know what you're feeling. Everybody goes through this kind of thing at some time or another. Don't want to get you down. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. One person gets upset, and it affects everything. It's going to be all right. Let's go upstairs, huh? good news for you. Yeah? I have a schedule for surgery tomorrow. You said you didn't want to wait. I thought you'd be pleased. I am. It's just... I'm scared. That's natural. Well, get a good night's rest. I'll see you tomorrow before the operation. Can't you just stay a little while? Sit down and talk to me or something? All right. All right. What would you like to talk about? I don't know. Where do you live? New Jersey. What do you do on weekends? Nothing very interesting. What about you? No, we were talking about you. No, you were asking about me. Why are you so uptight? Why always this cold professional doctor, Rich? Really? I didn't realize that was what I projected. I'll bet. Well, if you must know, what I like to do is sing in clubs. Nightclubs? Have a group. Myself, drummer, bass, guitarist, keyboards. We sing in these little clubs, you know, kind of with practically no light at all, just little red candles on the tables. It's great. Get up on the stage, it's pitch dark, can't see a thing. Just hear this sound of being of glasses and people lighting cigarettes, laughing. 
When you start to sing, it's just like throwing a line out into the ocean, you know? People stop talking one by one, start listening to you. Till finally it's real quiet. You're just singing there. It's a great feeling of connection, you know what I mean? I'd like to hear you sing sometime. Would you kiss me? I don't do that. I took an oath never to kiss a patient. Maybe after the operation, when we feel like celebrating. Not even here? Are you here? Why did you do that? Because you need it. Do a good job. I can't seem to grab a hold of your flat nine Anything at all Your flat seventh I could fly a mile high But G major seventh I fall Ought to put on my big head And on a pair of shoes Lord, I got a handle on the blue like this is a mixed blessing. It's very difficult for anybody but the surgeon to see. It takes a long time, so it's very tedious for the observer. There's one nice touch. There will be a patient around for post-operative discussion when it's all over. If you want to watch, that's fine, but please, please obey the rules. First thing we're going to do is make a horseshoe-shaped incision in the scalp. Now the incision is done. We want to contain the bleeding as much as possible, so we'll put on some clamps. Clean that, please. 
sponge for you. Scalpel. Sponge, please. And a clamp. Very clean. Now, comes the hard work. We will now make five small burr holes in the skull using a cranial perforator. Hold it steady. Hold. Right there. Here we go. A little more irrigation. Hand drill, please. You'll never make a dentist. Here, let me get that for you. Now, using a giggly saw, we connect the burr holes. Free the bone. There. Elevator. And finally, out comes the bone flap. Treat it tenderly because it has to go back. And after an hour and a half of being a mechanic, you reach the point where you're ready to become a surgeon again. Now we're going to lay back the dura. There. Ladies and gentlemen, how would you like to see a perfectly placed meningioma? Excuse me, let me stretch my leg a bit. I'm not sure where it is. It seems a little hard to see. Dead center. Dick, you better, uh, I think the brain is swelling. Sure is. We're running out of room here. Wong, how's the anesthetic? Everything's fine. Cardiac monitor? Normal. No arrhythmia. Vital signs? Stable. Okay, Luddy, let's clean up the field and take a good look. I'll irrigate. Good. Wong, let's hyperventilate the patient. Maybe that'll bring the swelling down. Sure. I want to call in the attending anesthesiologist and have us checked out. Okay with you? Absolutely. Call him. I hope this is your fault, Kwong, because if it's not, we're in a lot of trouble. Oh. What do you think it is? I don't know. Is it going down? No. You ever seen anything like this before? No. She may be hemorrhaging. Where? Somewhere down under, somewhere we can't see. Maybe the other hemisphere, maybe from behind. It might be building up pressure, forcing the brain up against us. I've never seen anything like it. I think we're in trouble. Better check this out. This is bad. This is really bad. What do you want to do? I don't know. I'll step back for a minute and think about her. Sir, may I ask you about... No, not now. Kwong? Everything checks out.
What's he doing? All right, Luddy. Let's turn her. And break the sterile field? We have to do something for her. Wong, get ready to turn the patient. Sponge. He's breaking the sterile field. An infection will kill her. Now watch the tubing. Careful. Careful. I got it. Scalpel. Get the clamps ready. And I'll need one more. All right, elevator, get it ready. Right there. Needle. Syringe. Damn it, there's no blood there. What now? What's making that brain swell? All right, that's it. We'll close her up. Turn her over. That's all for this side. How's the tissue color? It's turning yellow. Dye. Long check her pupils. Right away. Dilated. No light response. Oh. Why? No reason, no explanation. Why? He lost her. Dr. Knott? What is it? Dr. Hutchison would like to know how your operation is going. Tell Dr. Hutchison she's dead. What did you say, doctor? You heard me, damn it, she's dead. Today, tomorrow, what's the difference? Let me close her up. I can't close. It's too swollen, there's no room. And I'll make some room. There. Now you can close. Sew her up. Dick? Shall I stay with her and recover it? Please. And tell him not to try anything heroic in there. exactly what happened. It was the kind of thing that happens once in a million, once in a billion. It shouldn't have happened, and I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. That's okay, then, huh? But how is she? Is she paralyzed a lot? We don't a know. little? Patrick. Is she a vegetable? Now, listen. Half a vegetable. Is she going to wake up? We don't know. Oh, good. Right. <laughs> you're in the operation for a lesion on the surface of the brain. After the dura had been opened, but before any manipulation of the tumor, the brain began to swell. No other symptoms. Dr. Beale. Uh, hydrocephalus. Good. 
If that's the case, what do you do? Hyperventilate the patient. It didn't work. Then what? Sir, before we get into hypotheticals, what about what just happened? Wasn't it risky for you to break the sterile field the way you did? Yes. Sir, was removing part of the brain the only solution to closing? What would you have done? I don't know. I'm only the student here. But when you stood back and waited, couldn't part of the brain have died during that time? It was already dead. We don't always have textbook solutions, you know. Sometimes the surgeon does everything right and there's still a problem. In that case, there's only one thing left to do. Act. Someone once asked an astronaut what he'd do if something went wrong with his life support systems. He had only 10 seconds. His answer was he'd use the first nine seconds to think and then he would act. And you still don't know why the brain swelled? No. No, I still don't know why the brain swelled. Look, she's not herself. Hey, man. 
I have a right to see you. Come on. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, do this thing. We'll take the car now. Can I talk to her? Yeah, sure. Kathy? It's me, Larry. Kathy, it's me, Larry. Well, it's okay, just keep talking. Yeah, I feel like an idiot, man, standing here and talking and not getting any answers. Hurry up. What's she saying? Kathy, what did you say? Hurry. Hurry up. Does she know what she's saying? We don't know. Sometimes, I guess. Hey, Kathy, listen to me. This is Patrick. You had a brain tumor, remember? They operated on you to take it out, but while you were under, something went wrong. Your brain man, began to swell. What are you doing, man? Don't talk to her like that. You're going to panic her out when you talk to her like that. Well, she's alive, isn't she? Suppose she's scared not knowing what's going on. I mean, she might even think it hasn't happened yet. And we don't know if she can hear us or not. I mean, I don't know what else to do. Kathy, what, what were you saying? Yeah. What'd she say? What did you say, Kathy? Um. It's all right. It's all right. Hey, what's she doing? Mm, mm. Kathy, stop it. Stop it. Mm, mm. Kathy, stop it. Mm. Stop that. Yeah. Doctor, what's happening? She's probably trying to express herself and just don't want to get in her. Mm. Mm. All right. All right, Kathy. All right, take it easy. Mm. Easy. Mm. Uh, certainly getting stronger. Uh, 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 uh. Can you hear me, Kathy? It's Dr. Connaught. Uh. What is it, Kathy? Uh. What do you want? Tell me. Uh. What? Uh. You want those off? Is that it? Uh -huh. All right, all right. Take it easy. Easy to All right. All right. Better? All right, come on. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, all right. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hit me. Harder. Harder. Come on. Come on. Do it to me. Do it. Come on, Kathy. Harder. Don't stop. Don't stop. Come on, Kathy. Come on, Kathy. That's it. Do it. Do it. Don't stop. Come on. That's it. That's it. She was there for a moment. She knew enough to be angry. Go to sleep, Patrick. Great. It means you'll have to start looking for a nursing home for her. 
nursing home. You know, we can't afford a nursing home. Then it'll have to be a state home. No way. I'm going to send her to a state home. I'll take her home with me. Taking care of Kathy isn't going to be easy. You don't think I'm capable of it? I don't know if you really understand. She probably won't be able to walk or talk, see, understand you, recognize you. She might not even know who she is herself. Do you really think you can take on that responsibility? I don't believe it. You just say it and you just do it, just like that. You know, you're really a cold bastard. Something new? Something new? Where the hell have you been? Are you kidding? I got a life to live, man. You couldn't find one hour in a, in a month to stop by? What would it be to you? She doesn't even know me anymore. I don't want you for my sister's boyfriend anymore. <laughs> Come on, get lost. No, you get lost! Look at this! What is this? Hey, man, what do you think you're doing? I'm kicking you out. You're kicking me out? I live here. here. No, you're a tenant, man. This apartment's in Kathy's name, remember? I'm kicking you out. I'm moving in. Wait, nuts or something. Don't mess with me. I don't want you in her life anymore. You don't want me in her life. You anymore. heard me. So why don't you just start packing up all this stuff before I throw it out in the hall? I'm not kidding. I'm taking care of Kathy now. Get out. Kathy, it's Dr. Connaught. You're doing very well. You're getting stronger every day. Soon we're going to move you to a, a nice, sunny room. Good nurses. And uh, I'm going to try to arrange it so it isn't too much of a, of a burden. She's swelling again. I want a new blood gas reading and a CAT scan right away. And call Dr. Ross and Dr. Luddy for me. I'm going to do a shunt. A shunt? Why? The CAT scan shows no indication of hydrocephalus. I think the brain is swelling because the body isn't absorbing the spinal fluid. Well, you tapped her. That didn't relieve the pressure. Now you're taking the risk of inflicting more brain damage. Without correcting the damage already done. I can't wait. I don't know what's causing this any more than you guys do. I only know if I don't do something, she's going to die. Any other suggestions? The shunt is placed into the ventricles where it drains the spinal fluids, hopefully controlling the swelling. Unfortunately, that's all we can hope for. The challenge to the physician is to place the tube deftly, quickly, and exactly the first time. I'm 
I'm Kathy Morris. That's right. I'm Kathy Morris. Good for you. Can you move your right arm, Kathy? Good girl. The right leg. Can you move the right leg? The right. Good. Good. Now, who am I? Do you know me? Who am I? Am I your doctor? Yeah. Yes, yes. Where are you? Where are you? Are you in a hospital? Yes. Hospital. Yes, that's right. I... Take it easy. Kathy, take it easy. You're going to have trouble remembering words for a while. Just relax about it. Take it slow. Uh, Maybe she means bacon. Uh, a soup. Soup would be good. What do we got? Chicken or beef noodle. Which? Chicken or beef? Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> 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 okay, would you touch your nose for me? Good. Right ear. Good. Left ear. Good. Shoulder. Right. Ankle. Simon says, touch your ankle. Okay. What's this? As if I didn't know. Huh. So tell me. Okay, I don't know. Elbow. Kathy, I want you to do something for me. I want you to have some patience. This is going to take some time. You, you never told me. Okay. Now I want the truth. The real truth. Very good. Sometimes you talk perfect. Okay. You've lost half the vision from both eyes. The outside of the right and the inside of the left. Indications are that's not going to change. You're aphasic. That means that you have interruptions in the flow of information to some areas of the brain. Language, pictures, words, numbers, expressions. You can't read or write. You have finger agnosia. You have right-left confusion. Will I... B Will... I get better. Yes, but we don't know how much. Some areas of the brain rebuild. Some transfer the work to other areas, and some will remain the way they are. Dr. Martin, extension 2114. sing for me. Remember? I know how much it means to you. Have you tried singing, Kathy? Have you tried? Why not? Because you can't remember the words, the lyrics. Why don't you 
try just making the sound. Forget about the words. Just hum. Make the sound. Come on, try something simple. Like row, row, row your boat. Try it, Kathy. Mm. <laughs> All right, okay. Forget the boat. What's your favorite song? Just hum it. sound it, but uh, I'm upset. I know you need time. Everything's fine at the hospital. All right. I'll leave word to put you through any time you call. in here because there's no need. Oh, yeah? He used to stop by every day just to say hello sometimes. Can I? I don't believe it. Warm-hearted neurosurgeon. Why do you say that? It's just the nature of the beast. After a while in OR, they just stop feeling. It's probably nature's emotional anesthesia. I don't believe that. No, it's true. They just pull in like a turtle. I'm not supposed to do that, honey. I want to see what I look like. It's always a shock, honey. The hair's already grown back. You know, with the hats and scarves I got now, nobody will even notice. Would you wrap me up again, please?
you can't come home yet. Yeah? Why not? I'm not set up for you, Kathy. Oh, come on, Patrick. You said you were. You said you kicked Larry out, and we're weird. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, you said we were ready. I need more time. Kathy, my life's a mess. I mean, I got 41 parking tickets just from parking outside since you've been here. Yeah, well, take the bus home, dumbhead, and stop sleeping here. Oh, great. So what about all your drugs, huh? I'll have them give them to me with a schedule. You'll forget the schedule. I'll learn to remember. Kathy, what about my school? And the money? And everything? Okay, Patrick. Look, stay in school. The money's gonna come. I'll get a job. Where are you gonna get a job? In the circus? You! I supported you, didn't I? When's it gonna be my turn? Kathy, I'm sorry. I really am. You know I didn't mean to say that. Patrick, I want to get back to my music. Okay. So, uh, you want to go talk to Dr. Kanat about it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on. Dr. You. Dr. Fisher. Kathy is right here. Dr. We're going home. I don't recommend it, Kathy. Your bandages need changing. You don't have the plate in your head yet. Your drug schedule is critical. I just don't think it's a good thing. I'm going home. You need therapy every day. We can come here for that. Every day? That's no problem. Right, Patrick? You won't push yourself. You won't do anything foolish like playing football or hockey <laughs> or something. You won't do that. Huh? No. Okay. I'll try to get you out this afternoon. Great. <laughs> You know everybody, don't you? The, the uh... Yeah, I guys, do. Sessions get... well, well, that ugly guy up there on guitar, that's Hogan. Hi. His, uh... His plan's almost as bad as he looks. <laughs> uh, you, you, you brought some music. Oh, uh, no. I can't read it anymore, so, uh... Listen, I'll, I'll just go la, 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 and, and as we get into it, I'll, I'll, I'll come in, okay? Okay, great. Uh, I mean, I can learn stuff. We can tape it, and I can learn it at home, all right? Right, yeah, that's all great. Right. Terrific, okay. come on. Okay, let's, uh, let's do, uh, going for it, huh? Yeah. All right. Going for it, what do you need over there? Okay, what was that? A, B, A. B, B oh, North Shark. Oh, B, natural. Yeah. Two, one, two, three, four. Put 
Put it down. I'm sorry, I told you. The words will come out eventually. It's okay. Be it's patient okay. with me. Okay, one more time, huh? Okay. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's just, let's just do another one, okay? Okay. Okay, Okay, let's uh, knock it off for the day. What do you say? Good idea. Hi, Larry. We just got started. Right. Well, take it easy, Kathy. You learn this one, and then next week maybe we'll do some more. Okay. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> what day next week? Friday. Okay. See you Friday. Bye, beautiful. Bye, Kathy. Take it easy. See you then. Bye. Take it easy. There? So, uh, how come you ran out on me in the hospital? I just couldn't hack it. I went to see you in the beginning, and I really freaked out. I got really scared. I couldn't stand to see you with your brain scrambled. I didn't want to be there when you died. Well, at least that's honest. Hey, maybe we can get together next week. You know, spend some time together. Why don't we just keep it to the music, okay? Yeah, sure, whatever you say, Kathy. Okay. That was steady and consistent throughout. I wish they were all that simple. Greg, excuse me, can I call you back? Thank you. Lily, you are so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Take your coat? No, no, thank you. Well, how's it been? Mm, fair. They've given me some time off, so uh, I'm going to go away. Where? Where are you going? I am going to London by boat. Alone. <laughs> I've never been to Europe. Then come with me. Give you some money for the trip. No, Richard, I don't need any, really. I just came to tell you I'd be away. <laughs> well, let me help you. Richard, anyway. I don't need any. Do you know that you and I have never really talked about what happened? You, uh... 
You needed a level of companionship that I can't give you. It's so clear to you. And it's confusing as hell to me. I mean, I love you so much, Richard, and I know I don't want a divorce, but I'm unhappy. So there must be something wrong with me. It must be my fault. Because you're happy, or at least you say you are. Lily, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you. It is not companionship I want, Richard. It's a relationship. And you are the one that can't have one. You may never have one. But in a way, I think you need a relationship more than I do. Because this isn't giving you life. It's taking it away from you. It may seem that way to you, Lily. But this is my life. Richard. They are so very lucky to have you. I brought you a card from London. Hold on a second. Hey, Kathy. Wait a second. Okay. Hi, Dr. Kennard, how you doing? Nice to see you. Welcome to our semi-private room. <laughs> it's very nice. I like it. What do you think? Oh, the hair. Yeah. Good. It's nice. I was going to wear my wig, but I figured you could handle it. <laughs> no, I like it very much. Guess what? What? I'm going to sing in a, a club. A club. Really? Yeah. Good. I've been practicing with my old group. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's really super. Can I take you back for you? Yeah, thank you. Well, what about the kiss? What kiss? You know, when the operation is over and we feel like celebrating. <laughs> that kiss. <laughs> you have a very self-serving memory. <laughs> Good. Not great. <laughs> Good. So, um... All we're serving tonight is wine, Dr. Kanad. Is that okay? That's perfect. Thank you. Be patient in there. You know, Kathy's been working on this dinner all day long. Ta-da! Happy birthday! It isn't your birthday, is no. it? No. Kathy, it's not his birthday. I know it's not his birthday, but a celebration is a celebration, right? Switch sides with me? I see you all the time. One, two, three, blow. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hear you and your wife split up. Kathy. It's okay, Patrick. Patrick, would you get some wine in the kitchen? Sure. Excuse me? We didn't actually split up. We uh, mutually decided that we needed some breathing space. Well, what went wrong? These things happen. Nobody's fault. Different people have different needs. Don't you want it back? <laughs> uh, Tell me if I'm embarrassing you. Look, Kathy, if somebody wants something that you can't give, there's nothing you can do. Maybe. What do we know? Not what we think we do, right? I was supposed to be dead. Don't you need somebody in your life? I know I do. I can't make it on my own. I've got Patrick. And I think you're just like me. Uh, listen, um, I really think I need a private room. <laughs> 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 we go on an 
8.30. Well, I'll be back. You sure a couple hours what you mean? Come on, Patrick, will you stop? Okay. The five numbers down cold. All right. See you later. Bye. Yep, good luck. Sound system, good people, pay stinks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how come there's no mic for me? I mean, where do I sing from? Well, well see, what we figured uh, was that we, the band would do a set first, and uh -huh. then maybe you come up and do a number, like uh, maybe going. A number? It. Come on, I'm part of this no, wait, group. Wait, Kathy, take I've been practicing for a long Kathy, time. Listen to me. The band has been working for six months without you, and our numbers are set. What about me as Ben? Singer. Well, uh, that's not the way we figured it was going to work out, Kevin. But we'd like you to stay for the night. Wait a minute, Kathy. Ka Kathy, you can't get home by yourself. I don't need you. I don't think so. I think it's more likely the seizure was brought on because we took you off the pain pills. You mean I won't have another seizure? I can't promise you that, Kathy. You know that plate thing you talked about? I want you to put it in my head right away. What's the rush? I want to get on with my life. There are a lot of good reasons to wait. Not for me. You said the operation wasn't such a big deal. I want you stronger. And I want you completely tapered off the pain pills. And whatever swelling there is around the area of the tumor has to be reduced before... Tumor? Yeah. I still have the tumor inside my head? Yeah. When I had to stop the operation, I couldn't get it. Why didn't you tell me this? 
Frankly, I didn't think there was a need to concern you, to upset you. No need to concern me? What is this? Whose life is this? Kathy, it was my best judgment. I don't like your best judgment. Your judgment wasn't great before, and it's not great now. That's not true. What happened to you could not be predicted, and the chances of it happening again are infinitesimal. The procedure itself really is very simple. You said that before. That's true, but the tests tell you... No! I need someone I can believe in. I need someone else. What are you trying to say? That I'm firing you. Admit it. You don't know everything about this. What if there's a problem and you need some help? You're such a star. You won't go for it. You'll want to do it all by yourself. Look, I know. I know where that comes from and I don't want it from you. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm really sorry. I thought we understood each other. Why won't you just say, I don't want you to fire me? Kathy, if you'd be more comfortable with someone else, why can't you say I don't want you to fire me? I don't want you to fire me. Why? Do you know why? Yeah. Because it would be too humiliating. I wouldn't do that. How does it look? Damn. What's wrong? It doesn't look good in there. Maybe we should leave it alone, huh? No. I'm going in. Cauterize those blood vessels. I want an entirely bloodless field. Scalpel. Don't let up on the manitol. Good. Buddy, do it for me. Kathy, you can open your eyes now. Come on, Kathy, it's Dr. Connaught. Come on. She's right on the edge. Come on, Kathy, you have to wake up now. Kathy, you have to wake up, Kathy. The operation is <coughs> over. Good job. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> A very good job. <laughs> good morning. Hi. I got a parking place right outside the door. Why are you all dressed up? I took a walk. Oh, this is for you. Patrick. How sweet. Yeah, I know. Except I didn't get it for you. Love and kisses, Tammy. Tammy? 
I have good news and I have bad news for you. How bad's the bad news? Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I'm ready. I think you should get a place on your own again. Wait a minute. Are you planning on moving back in with that yo-yo Larry? No. This is Debbie from s school. Patrick, you and I have a way of using each other as an excuse. You know what I mean? You have your life and I have mine. I have to get on with my life and you've got to get on with yours too. Have you talked to Kanan about this? I just thought it up last night. Dr. Campbell. Excuse me. Uh, they'll be ready downstairs by the time we get there, ma'am. Okay, just a second. Yes, ma'am. Will you still carry my suitcase for me? <sighs> Certainly. Hello. Hey. You look wonderful. Oh. Thanks. You're welcome. I feel great. Good. Well, I guess I'm going to go downstairs and take care of the bill. Excuse me. See you later, Patrick. I got a new roommate. Good. From school. Good. Patrick's going to do his thing. I'm going to do mine. And you should do yours. Okay. I'm working on it. I'm going to continue my singing. Great. It's going to take longer than I thought. But I'm going to do it. I'm sure you will. I have to come in next week for a checkup. You going to be here? As a matter of fact, I'm going out of town for a while. Where will you be? London. London? Yep. Why London? <laughs> You're nosy, aren't you? Yep. How long will you be? I don't know. As long as I have to. City, huh? Great. It's all right. I want to go home alone. Kathy, come on. Patrick, I know what I'm doing. Thanks. Officer! Come on, give me a break, huh? I was just picking my sister up from the hospital. This... See you later, Patty. Can you believe this? This is my 50-second ticket. I can't pay for this.